But Matthew Barhoma, for the defense, they have to separate all of these 12 incidents uh, apart, right? Because it's very easy for a jury to say, well, if the defendant did this in one instance, then he must have did, done this throughout all, you know, all of the victims. And again, he's facing 67 charges here. So how does the defense do that? And, and how do they, do you think that there are some circumstances, some events that are a stronger case for the prosecution than others? Certainly. One thing that the defense needs to do here um, is to uh, argue over character evidence. You can't use the fact that someone did something, that they acted in conformity with it in a specific instance. Now, the big the big thing that we're going to have to get over is modus operandi, because what is the M.O.? Is, is there a consistent M.O.? Did he carry out this um, in the same fashion, in the same way, every single time? Um, and from a defense standpoint, what you need to do is separate these out, say that there is no modus operandi, and say that this is character evidence. You're trying to show the fact that he, uh, you know, maybe maybe acts in conformity with something um, and something of the sort. The more that you could separate this out for the jury, the more that you could show uh, that there was a lack of an M.O., um, the more that you're going to be able to establish, uh, um, you know, that there is no guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, we're waiting to jump back live for day three of the Zachary Wester trial. We saw a feed for a second, and then it just shut off. There's, It's a blank screen. There's no noise. We don't know uh, when that's going to be turned on, but we are waiting to jump back live. So as soon as I see something, we will go there. But let's just continue on a little bit more with testimony from yesterday, and this is more of uh, Mr. Bolin. All right, thank you.